Groundhog Day is actually an American adaptation of a Western European folklore tradition, which, characteristics of all such traditions, predates recorded history. It is also one among countless traditions whose fame and popularity has been bolstered by Hollywood. What follows is a narrative of informal backstories regarding this observance's ancestry, which is older than the Giza Pyramid. In Western Europe, astronomy and the calendars which arose from it are at least 5,100 years old. That is approximately when the first monoliths were placed at Stonehenge in England. Although some scholars say that our transatlantic ancestors were tracking the seasons long before then. These prehistoric Europeans had much in common with their descendants who introduced Groundhog Day to North America. They lived or died according to how well they could anticipate and adapt to seasonal changes. It appears from the Stonehenge placings that they were first concerned with the winter solstice, and they marked the position of the sun all the way from there to the summer solstice and back again. Of course, they could also estimate the midpoints, which we now call the spring and autumn equinoxes. By about 4,000 years ago, they had acquired the sophistication to determine what one could call the cardinal cross quarters, the approximate midpoints of the seasons. These are February 2nd, May 1st, July 15th, and November 1st, the preceding evening of which is Halloween. By roughly 3,800 years ago, the Celtic Druid priests had established two cardinal cross quarters as the onsets of the two seasons they recognized. November 1st was established as Samhain, New Year's Day and winter's onset, in England, Ireland, Scotland, and northern France. They also recognized May 1st, also known as May Day, as Beltane, the beginning of summer, and they established both days by celebrations of great fervor. February is the customary cross quarter between astronomical winter and spring. With Celtic winter, 181 days, however, February 2nd separated the coldest 94 days from the comparatively milder and increasingly more hospitable 87 days before May 1st. When the Roman Empire extended its conquests to Britain in the year 43 of the Common Era, it officially installed the celebration of Februalia, a sort of late winter pre-spring cleaning and purification festival. Whatever the treatise had built up in homes, particularly over the heart of winter, was removed as residents began preparing for the next planting season, and in many cases, for coming wars. Whether in ancient or modern times, the second half of the coldest season was cause for celebration, if only because the celebrants had survived long enough to get to it. Rome's transition from a polytheistic megastate to a Christian empire required some adjustments, and such is a delicate matter. But a fair amount of what some might deem ecclesiastical accommodation was exercised in order to ease pre-Christian people into their new religion. One of the ways to do this was to acquaint them with the tradition of bringing a new mother and infant son to the synagogue for spiritual purification and introducing her baby to the faithful 40 days after his birth. February 2nd became the day to commemorate the infant Jesus presentation in the temple and to St. Simeon, as recounted in Luke chapter 2 verses 25 to 35. This 
neatly comports with celebrating the Nativity on December 25, which is actually 39 days earlier. Also known as Candlemas, it would in time come to make thrifty use of candle stubs by recycling their precious wax and transforming them into new candles. A star emerged from these celebrations, and when European settlers reached North America, that star performer was nowhere to be found. Hedgehogs, there are more than 15 species of them, are found in abundance throughout Europe and in very large areas of both Asia and Africa. But their closest relative in North America is the porcupine. In the eastern U.S. and Canada, one species with a similar name and a somewhat similar hibernation pattern is the ground squirrel Marmota monox, which the Algonquian people called woodjack, and which was anglicized to woodchuck. Considering their subterranean dwellings, they also became known as groundhogs, among many other names. They typically begin their annual hibernation in October and emerge from their super slumber sometime in February, essentially as hedgehogs do. Hedgehog Day and its descendant Groundhog Day are largely relegated to the realm of folklore. But perhaps there is a meteorological explanation and a fascinating one at that, for how the lore of the hedgehog, groundhog, and its shadow came about. In Europe, especially in its northern environments, winter is dominated by the presence of Arctic and even polar air masses, so bitterly cold that they contain no moisture whatsoever. That makes the days cold but sunny. Over the very long haul, weather regimes average in length a bit more than six weeks, and primordial climatologists came to anticipate that after 45 days, the dry Arctic air is replaced by moisture-laden air from the Atlantic Ocean. This air is milder and more tolerable, but also quite cloudy. It is plausible that hedgehogs were observed leaving their burrows on cold sunny days, but then retreating to the warmth of their subterranean abodes. It might have been supposed that the hedgehogs were distressed by their shadows, although it is more likely a practical reaction to the temperature. If the milder, cloudy weather encouraged the hedgehogs to remain above ground, at least long enough to case the place for anything edible, they would coincidentally have had no shadows to see. From what we may call the practical logic of observations and their informal and often unreliable conclusions, folklore customs are begotten. St. Swithin's Day is named for a 9th century Anglo-Saxon bishop. Its reputation for forecasting the next 40 days of weather could very well depend upon the tendency for summer droughts to be long-lasting. Influenced, however, by recollections of the merciless rains of the Little Ice Age, which began to plague the world some 447 years after St. Swithin's passing. In any event, it underscores the importance our ancestors assigned to the cross quarters because that precarious forecast stretched all the way to Halloween. Now, how Groundhog Day became associated with a time warp that might have lasted millennia is, to put it metaphorically, grist for another mill. But Hedgehog Day its European antecedent evolved cycles which differed from those Bill Murray's Phil Connors character 
underwent 